Hi again, and welcome back to Survey of Engineering. We're going to be uh, working on our electrical engineering unit and starting to talk about the fundamentals of electricity in this video. The objectives for this video, things that you should be able to do, are you should be able to be looking for how to explain the electron's role in electricity. You should be able to identify common electrical conductors and insulators. Explain the concepts of voltage, current, power, and resistance. Be able to recognize schematic symbols for batteries, resistors, and diodes. You should be able to use Ohm's law to calculate voltage, current, and resistance. Use the power law to calculate power, voltage, and current, and apply Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws to evaluate simple circuits. For your portfolio, Please write in your notebook the four equations that we're going to introduce in this video. This will serve as a nice reference for you as we do our calculations. Those equations are Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws, and the power law. Define each of the terms in your notebook. Examples are voltage V, current I, resistance R. What does each of these terms uh, represent and what does it mean within a circuit? And also write the units that are associated with each term, for example, ohms, volts, etc. Okay, what makes a good conductor? Well, a good conductor is a material that has electrons that are willing to flow freely. These are generally metals um, located on the left side of the periodic table, colored in, in silver here, especially copper, gold, and um, silver in uh, column 11. Metals are good conductors because the, the electrons are not held tightly by those atoms and so they're able to flow freely within the material. Nonmetals are generally considered insulators, meaning that they don't conduct el electricity well. They like to hold on to their electrons and not let them move through the materials. Those are located on the right side of the periodic table in that sort of brownish color. In between, there's a section, sort of a division in between the metals and the nonmetals, that is less of a, a solid line and more of a fuzzy line, and those we call metalloids. These materials have properties, some properties that are like metals and some properties that are like nonmetals. And with respect to conduction, they are called or considered semiconductors, meaning that sometimes they can conduct electricity and sometimes they can't. So given enough energy applied to them, they will let electrons flow. And that's what makes them a semiconductor. So we like to talk about electrons as being antisocial. They do not like to be close together. They want to be as far from one another as they possibly can. So given the possibility, they were spread out and give themselves equidistance in a material. But they are attracted to protons. So negative charge attracts is attracted to a positive charge. So on a conductor, things like copper or aluminum, the electrons are free to spread out and they will as much as possible. On an insulator, electrons get trapped and they're just waiting for a chance to make a jump. So an example of this kind of a jump is a Van de Graaff generator. Um, the belt on a Van de Graaff generator causes charge to build up on the outside aluminum dome of the generator and an opposite charge to build up on the wand. And given enough of a charge distance, there will be a spark in between the wand and the, the dome of the, the generator. And that's the jump across um, the insulator of air. So let's talk about the types of concepts within a circuit. First, let's talk about voltage or potential. This is a measure of how crowded the electrons are within um, on a wire and how much they're willing to work to get uncrowded. More crowding results in more uh, aggressive electrons and they're wanting to move. Um, this can be analogous to the pressure potential within a water tank 
the greater the pressure, the more the water wants to flow out of the bottom of the tank. Some common voltages that you might be familiar with, a AA battery has one and a half volts, um, car battery, battery would be 12 volts, neighborhood power lines 480 volts, and transmission lines have 350,000 volts on them. Let's talk about what we mean by voltage difference. So the voltage difference is what is the potential that is causing, that would cause electrons to move. We can think about that in terms of if the voltage is, same, is the same on a conductor, no electrons are moving. If you look at the figure on the right with the conductor and the two batteries, those two batteries are equal voltage and that means that the voltage at any point on that conductor is going to be the same. This is analogous to two tanks that are at the same level, they have the same potential and there's no flow between the two tanks. Now if we change one battery and connect it to connect it as an uncharged battery, we no longer have the same analogy. This is more like a tank that has more water in it connected to a tank with very little water in it. We can understand that that would cause water to flow from one tank to another, but it's also analogous to the batteries here. We no longer have V1 equal to V2, so we actually will cause current to flow from one battery to charge up the other battery. Current is electron flow. It's the measure of how many electrons are moving past a point per second. We can think about this kind of like fluid flow in a pipe. And just for reference, one amp, which is the measurement of current, is equal to 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons per second, or one coulomb per second. And unless there are sparks, the current is the same along a continuous wire. That means that I can pick a point A anywhere along the wire and a point B any along the anywhere along the wire. And the current at A is equal to the current at B if it's a same wire. It's the same thing with a flow in a pipe. Flow at point A is equal to flow at point B. So common currents are LEDs are 10 to 20 milliamps. That means one thousandth of an amp. A lethal dose for a person would be 100 milliamps. An oven runs at 20 amps, or starting a car would be require 50 amps. Resistance is a resistor in a circuit controls or restricts how much current can be flowing through the circuit at a given potential or volt voltage. We can think about this like a narrowing in a pipe that slows the flow of water through a pipe. It slows the, the resistor slows the flow of electrons through the circuit. So if we put it all together, we can look at it and compare a water circuit to an electrical circuit. Here we've replaced a water pump to give us our pressure potential to cause our flow. We still have our narrowing of our pipe that is our resistance. Um, and we have flow of water around the circuit. Similarly with an electrical circuit we have a power supply that's supplying our electric potential or our voltage causing current to flow and the resistor which is resisting or limiting that flow of that current.